Hello there, and welcome to the first real episode of the Linguistics Course for Future Conlangers. This episode, we will be discussing what exactly is linguistics and what is conlanging. In the easiest definition, linguistics is the study of language as a whole, and conlanging, or the making of constructed languages, is, well, the making of constructed languages. If we look up the dictionary definition in linguistics, we can see that there are many sub-studies of language, which most of which we will cover in this series. To answer the questions of when language is used, we can look to the knowledge of Taylor Benke, who majored in linguistics in college. She says, language is everywhere. It's what we use to order a pizza, talk on the phone, tell jokes, and make sense of the world around us. And that's true, we really do use language for the majority of our communication. You often won't go a day without having a conversation with someone or at least sharing a few words. And using speech is not the only way to communicate. There is also nonverbal communication forms such as sign language. In fact, there are almost 300 different sign languages around the world being actively used today. So I guess that answers how language is used, at least most of the time. And why do we use language? To communicate with those around you, of course. Without language, imagine trying to convey something even slightly complex to another person. It would be pretty hard, and you would have to get pretty creative. Moving on, there are four aspects to linguistics. The duality of patterning, the arbitrariness of the sign, reflexivity, and displacement. We will now cover each of these in a simple yet descriptive way. See, the ability to consciously reflect on the nature of language is almost exclusive to humans, and so linguists have broken down language into two groups. There are forms, which are sounds or hand shapes, and combinations of forms, which make meanings of words. This is known as the duality of patterning. The idea that words are made up of two levels of structure. Now, let's use an example to explain the concept of the arbitrariness of the sign, which was emphasized by Ferdinand de Saussure. A sign is any combination of forms that we as humans link to a person, place, thing, or idea. The concept of a sign being arbitrary is that the word car could actually be, be depicting what we know as a cow, and cow depicts a cell phone. The combinations of sounds k, a, and w truly don't have any connection with the animal except for what we have assigned it as. Cow in Spanish is vaca, and in Russian it is karova. These words all mean the same thing, a cow, but the words themselves mean nothing. It is the relationship to the thing we as humans have assigned it. That is the arbitrariness of the sign. To be clear, there are exceptions such as onomatopoeia and icons, but these are special situations. Moving on, we can discuss reflexivity, or the ability to use language to talk about a language, sort of like word inception. If you cannot use language to understand language itself, then it is not complicated enough to compare with human communication. And the last aspect of linguistics is displacement, which is the ability to talk in the past, present, and future tenses. For example, a cow cannot express that it wants some grass tomorrow, or that they wanted grass yesterday, but they can express the simple expression that they want grass. Now, we can discuss the many forms of linguistics. There is phonetics, which is the study of individual sounds in spoken languages, or hand shapes in sign languages. There is phonology, the study of how individual sounds or hand shapes are combined into specific patterns. Then there is morphology, the study of the internal in structure of words. Syntax, which is the study of how words group together to make sounds. Pragmatics, or the study of meanings of words and sentences in a larger social context. Then there are some others, such as social linguistics, how language relates to society, historical linguistics, or how language has changed over time, and psycholinguistics, and how language is affected by and affects the brain. 
Once again, conlanging is the creation of constructed languages. But when we think of conlangs, you probably remember the movie Avatar or the show Game of Thrones. These have both created entire languages or conlangs for their art. Or even look at The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. He created a language for his novel as well. This shows that any form of art can implement a conlang. Just get creative. Just here we saw a movie, a novel, and a television series utilize conlanging. You can't do it if you don't try. So remember, never give up on something before you've even tried it. Trust me, if I can do it, so can you. In short, there are many subdivisions of linguistics and many subgenres inside of those, but don't let that discourage you. You can learn it just like I and many others have. Have you ever used a voice assistant on your phone before? Well, without linguists, that wouldn't be possible. Have you ever read a really good book? Chances are they study at least one form of linguistics. And maybe one day, you can use the knowledge you gained here to make something great. Dream big and don't give up. Good things come to those who try hard. With that said, it's time I brought this episode to a close. In the next episode, we will discuss morphology. So stick around. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you all next time. Later.